the trades. There's two surefire trades that just happened and that will imp impact. I don't know if it will impact the NBA as a whole, but it has impacted the teams. So the first trade let's talk about is the Los Angeles Lakers sending D'Angelo Russell and Mozgov to Brooklyn for Lopez and a late round pick. So let's start with Marky Mark because he's the resident expert. Oh, we'll say we'll let okay. go we'll, first. We'll let this. <laughs> let's, let <him laughs> let's let him go first. All right. What do you Put think about that trade? What do you think about the trade? Well, first and foremost, I think D'Angelo Russell just got snubbed. He was an All Star in the making. He was gonna make some moves in LA, and they just snubbed him and put him to Brooklyn. And Brooklyn's like the dumpster of the NBA. So now he's just sleeping in the dumpster while NBA players go into the LA Lakers and they're gonna thrive in the Lakers while. D'Lo, my boy D'Lo, D'Angelo Russell, Russell, is just gonna be thrown away and never be heard, never to be heard again. But why do you like D'Angelo Russell so much? Because he has ice in his veins. That's why. <laughs> okay. I, I think this is actually a blessing in disguise for D'Angelo. I think that the Lakers spotlight, just the pressure and the expectation that Lakers fans and just the Lakers franchise in general have. I don't think he's mature enough to handle it at this point of his career. Maybe he'll be back there at some point of his career, but I think this is a good move for Russell. It's a blessing in disguise. He might not see it yet because now he's going to be on a team that has, he could probably be the best player, maybe him or Jeremy Lin is the best player in that team right now. And I think that, is a, that could benefit him a lot because he's a ball-dominant player. He's a ball-dominant guard that needs the ball in his hand to create things and for his own. So I think this is a good opportunity for him. Uh, on the team uh, side of it, I think this is a Lakers move to dump, dump salary and to make space for Paul George coming in because Moscow had that really ugly contract that they signed him for for $70 million for like three years. So this was their move to make space for Paul George coming in as a free agent next summer. So not, this is not a take on D'Angelo, but also a head inside of you because they're getting a of a point guard to draft Lonzo. This was, their, this was all in their plan. This was a perfect plan that they had. They got rid of a point guard to make space for a future point guard that they think was going to be a star. And they got rid of a salary, a salary dump, basically, of a player that really was garbage. I don't know why they decided to sign him for that long. That's not Magic Johnson's fault. Now J Magic Johnson is making, kind of correcting all the you know, screw-ups or the mistakes, mishaps that, um, that's been made by the front office. And here he is, taking in that salary cut so that they can sign... Paul George, who wants to play for the Lakers? So that's, All right, let's that's, let's get let's get straight um, straight question. Here we go. So, who is the bigger winner in this trade? Is it Lakers or is it uh, Brooklyn Nets? Ooh, for the, sure, Lakers. That's uh, that's Laker rice. It is a win for them, and D'Angelo is a win too, because now he gets to play in the team that he's could probably be the best player where he can shine. So, Lakers for you, and how about you? I think Lakers also, yeah. but also D'Angelo Russell will thrive in Brooklyn, but he will thrive in a dead end. What do you think, PJ? <laughs> oh, I'm just going to say, I'll just jump on the bandwagon. Woo, Lakers, I'll say D'Angelo is a talented, uh, you know, he's a talented scorer. He's a talented player. And this also, is a win for the Nets in the sense of they have no picks for the, rest, for the next few years. They have garbage picks because they, made a, they, they threw out all their good picks to the Boston Celtics. So if they're not going to get a pick, they need to get a good player somewhere at uh, one point or another. And they got a good player in terms of Russell. So in a way, if you think about it, the Nets are getting a win in this because they're getting a player that they can't get in the draft because they have no draft picks. No matter how bad, no matter how like, you know, crappy they play for the next few years, they're not going to get a pick because they gave it all to Boston. So there you have it. We have both a win-win, I guess, in that sense. Let's go to the second trade. We don't have a lot of time. Um, it just happened during the draft. But it was Jimmy Butler to Minnesota and a 16th round pick. And in Chicago, they got Dunn, Levine, and a 7th round pick, which was Mark... What's his name? Markinen. Markinen. So, what do you guys think about that? What do you think about that trade? Jimmy Butler not being a bull anymore. Well, first and foremost, is Rajon Rondo still going to be in Chicago? He still has one year. He still has one yeah. year. And, and Zach we, Levine is and also in the guard spot. So, that means they're going to be sharing minutes between Rondo and Levine, which... I think Levine can become an all-star if he tried, if he got more minutes. But he can't because Rajon Rondo has the same, or they'll be sharing minutes with him. Mm. What do you think, Mark? I, uh, I think this is a perfect situation for both the young guards, Dunn and uh, Levine. Because right now, Dunn is going to have a veteran point guard that knows, that has a championship ring on his belt. 
that's going to guide him and, and basically mentor him on his time in Chicago, which Rondo has, right? And Levine is actually, a, a, he's going to be straight up slotting to his natural position, which is a shooting guard. Because they, they've been trying to play him at a point guard position in Minnesota, and he, he no, he, he's, it's not in that, his natural, he didn't do well in his first year because they tried to play him in point guard. And this year, they played him on a shooting guard, and he averaged 20 points a game. He, him and, and Andrew Wiggins were the top scorer, along with Towns, the three 20-point scorer a game. They had a really good team with him as a shooting guard. So now they're getting opportunity in Chicago, where Butler is getting opportunity to reunite with Tom. He basically his career was shined when he played for Tom. Mm. If you think about it, right? He shined. He was a second round, late round pick, and now he's an all star. So now, all right. So what? Do, who do you think got the better side of that trade, Minnesota or Chicago? That's that's this one is a little bit tougher, but I'm gonna say Chicago because they're getting two young guys out of nothing. Jimmy Butler was already wanted to leave. Jimmy Butler was causing a lot of drama and a lot of tension with the Chicago Bulls front office. This it's no they they got the most out of Jimmy Butler because they knew he was going to leave 